In the last video, we talked about the consequences of having two countries that have their own currency be on the gold standard. The first implication is that it implies that there is a fixed exchange rate between the two countries' currencies. So in this example over here, one country A dollar was equivalent to two country B dollars because of the gold standard. The second implication is that the interest rates in the two countries have to be relatively similar. If they are not, that implies that there is an incentive for people to take money out or take gold out of the lower interest rate currency and move it to the higher interest rate currency. And so to make sure that doesn't happen, the central bank has to basically make sure that their interest rates are in line with those of the interest rates in other countries that are abiding by the gold standard. So now we're going to talk about some of the advantages for being on the gold standard. And the first thing I'm going to do is make some of this disappear. So as I mentioned, um, to the two countries, country A and country B, to be on the gold standard have to have their interest rates be relatively similar. So we're going to assume that the interest rate in country A is 5% and the interest rate in country B is also 5%. So the first advantage to being on the gold standard is that it makes it very easy for people who are exporting and importing goods between country A and country B, it, it makes it very easy for them to trade. And the reason for that is because there's no exchange rate volatility. You know, as we mentioned, because of the gold standard, there's a fixed exchange rate between the currency in country A and the currency in country B, and that exchange rate is that one country A dollar is equal to two country B dollars. So let's imagine that we're a shoe manufacturer and that we typically sell shoes in country A. We sell shoes for one country A dollar in country A. And let's imagine that we want to export some of these shoes to country B. So all we have to do is we take some of our shoes and we send them over on a boat to country B. And in country B, you know, let's assume that we're able to sell them for the equivalent price that we're able to sell them in country A. So that's equal to one country A dollar, which is equal to one gram of gold, which is equal to two country B dollars. And so we sell, we sell the shoes for two country B dollars in country B, and then we take those two country B dollars and we change them to uh, one gram of gold. And then we take that one gram of gold and we send it back to ourselves in country A. Now, as you can see here, because there's a fixed exchange rate between country A dollars, uh, gold, and gold in country B dollars, there's no risk that by the time you ship back your one gram of gold to country A, that it'll be somehow worth, you know, something different than one country A dollar. But you can imagine that if this exchange rate was fluctuating on a minute by minute or hour basis, that there is some likelihood that by the time you ship your one gram of gold back to country A, it could be worth, you know, 0.5 country A dollars or, you know, 1.2 country A dollars. You know, it could be something different from what you expected it to be. So one of the advantages of the gold standard was that because there was a fixed exchange rate between gold and the currencies of each country, it made trade a lot easier by eliminating any risk of exchange rate volatility.